Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady, where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. Okay, it has been busy out here in these tax streets these last couple of weeks. And my, uh, you know, myself, along with my other tax colleagues, yeah, we're just a little exhausted because this is the tax season that will not end. So um, yesterday, which would have been April 9th, it is now April 10th at the time of this video, um, whenever you watch it, we got some more updates as you know, for the filing deadline. So I want to talk about those and let you know what else has changed in the last 24 hours besides the wind, you know? Okay. So it's actually, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, even though it's coming in bits and pieces, it's actually a good thing. So at least in my opinion. All right. So if you were required to file a tax return or make a payment that was due April, April 1st, 2020, or before July 15th, those are now postponed until July 15th. Now, if you file an extension to for your taxes, all right, so if your tax due date was between April first, 2020 and, and, um, July 15th. Okay. If you file an extension, your extension is only good until October 15th. You don't get six more months after July. Okay. Now, so those include the form, the form 1040. So all of my 1040, uh, filers, that's your individual income tax, your 1120. That's your corporate tax, both the fiscal and, um, calendar year corporations that had a deadline between April 1st, 2020 and July 15th. You now have until July 15th and 1065 fiscal year filers, you know, the partnerships, if you operate on a fiscal year and your tax deadline fell between those 1041s and there's a whole list of tax forms, but those are the major ones that apply to my audience. But if you're a fiscal year filer and you had a tax deadline that fell between April 1st, 2020, July 15th, 2020, you're now postponed and you're due July 15th. Now, if you had estimated tax payments, okay, between, due between April 1st and July 15th, 2020, they are now due July 15th. Now, remember, if you listen to um, a previous broadcast, you know, when they wrote the law and it was probably really just an oversight, your Q2 estimated tax payment was still due in June and your Q1 was not, was due in July. So yeah, at one point, your Q2 ta estimated tax payment was due before Q1. Well, now everybody is due on July, uh, by July 15th. So for estimated tax payments that fell between April 1st and July 15th, 2020, you now have until July uh, 15th to pay those. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. Okay. Um, now if you have to make an election on a timely filed form between April, April 1st, 2020 and July, it will still be considered timely filed if you do it by July 15th. So that can be like your 475 elections for your Forex people. So if you had any type of election that you needed to make during that time, if you do it by July 15th is now considered um, timely filed if you do it by July 15th. Okay. Um, there is also a postponement on sensitive actions that were due between April 1st and July 15th, 2020. Listen, these dates are important. You hear me repeating them over and over again, because if your stuff happened on March 30th, then this does not count. If you, if something happens after July uh, 15th and you know, no other laws are written to change that, no other announcements are made. These dates are important. Okay. Uh, 24 hours really does make a difference. But anyway, so if you had sensitive actions between April 1st and July 15, 2020, like filing a court petition, for instance, um, it then you have you actually have some extension time. Now, that also includes requests for refunds. So if you have not filed your 2020 your 2016 taxes and you are due a refund, you now have until July 15th to do that. Just yesterday, you only had till April 15th. Today, you have until July 15th uh, to request those refunds. Interest and penalties begin to accrue on tax liabilities starting July 16th. Listen, I have said this previously. If you have a tax liability 
you know, first of all, go ahead and get your taxes filed now, because even though the federal tax deadline is extended, it doesn't mean that your state extended. OK, so you really you may be filing sooner than July 15th anyway, because your state gets their information from your federal tax return. Now, you will probably never again have seven months to pay off your taxes, interest and penalty free. So go ahead and get your taxes prepared, find out what the damage is. And if you got a tax liability, you have time to pay this off before interest and penalties kick in starting July 16th. OK, now um, the IRS is also getting some um, postponement on certain actions. There's a whole bunch that's in that right there. I won't go into all of that. But if you have. Um, if you are dealing with the IRS on, you know, maybe a tax liability, if you got some an installment agreement or something going on, get with your tax professional that is handling that for you to find out what your dates are. There is also something cool that I caught um, for there's an extension of time to participate in the annual filing season program. OK, so if you are a tax professional that's not credentialed, meaning you're not an enrolled agent, you're not a CPA, you're not a tax attorney. Usually the application to participate in the annual filing season program is due April 15th. You now have until July 15th to um, for the calendar year to ex um, to submit your application to um, to participate in the program to get your um, continuing education credits. OK, so who chow. All right. So there's still so yeah so now basically if you had anything going on between April 1st 2020 uh, and July 15th 2020 if you had filing deadlines if you had payment deadlines those are generally extended now there may have been some exceptions so you know I'm just going over the general that's going to apply to most people if you've got a specific situation contact your tax professional look on the IRS website to see if any of that applies to you. I'm still getting questions about stimulus payments. Like when are they coming out? Listen, from what I've seen on the news, I'm seeing the same news as you are as when it comes down to these stimulus payments, tax professionals, we don't push the button. Okay. Um, exactly how those are going to show up. It's all depends on our government, the IRS and how they get those out. I know they're doing direct deposits first and then mailing checks second. Okay. So if you've got to get a check mailed to you is maybe later rather than sooner then these payments show up. Um, the, um, then there is the issue with the simple tax returns. Uh, from what I have seen, most commercial tax software has now been equipped to file these simple returns so that uh, people that don't normally file a return can actually do that. Uh, you can contact your tax professional. I know TurboTax also has something available in order to facilitate that for you to file. For And again, this is for people who normally do not have a filing a, a requirement, people that may be on Social Security or your income is too low. Um, and you were not required to file, then you have the, those options available. Now, if you were required to file a return, you can't just file a simple return. OK, you actually have to file. So if you have not filed your 2018 or your 2019 tax return, then you're going to actually have to file those returns in order in, in order to be eligible to receive the stimulus payment. The other big question I've got is about the Paycheck Protection Program loans. OK, again, this is not something that tax professionals actually control. You know, the only way that that tax professionals are involved is that we're helping you get your books in order. We're making sure that your taxes are filed, but we can't do that without you. Um, I know that there are there, you know, the bigger companies are definitely getting approved for that, even um, like our local pool. You know, they sent out an email saying, hey, we got approved for the Paycheck Protection Program, blah, blah, blah. OK, great. So um, there's still, you know, issues with people that, you know, don't have this stuff together. And the only thing I can tell you at this point is the number one lesson learned, right, that you got to get your books together, even if you don't have the income to maintain a bookkeeper or accountant or anything like that. You've got to have those books together, even if, you know, if you got to do it yourself, you know what it is, what it is, right? You got to have those things in place. 
But I even saw on the news this morning where, you know, small business owners are complaining and feeling shut out because they don't have the accounting staff and everything that bigger companies do. But you don't need to have an accounting staff. You can have you can get bookkeeping software that is available to you to help you keep your books. Uh, what else? I think that was it. Whew, for all of those announcements. Okay. So, um, yeah, things are still rapidly changing. And the only thing that we can do is try to keep up. But really, I, like I said, as far as these tax returns go, you guys, you know, if you've got this tax liability going on, you've got a lot of time to pay down that tax liability before the interest and penalties kick in. If you can do that, do that to the best of your ability, because like I said, we may never have this moment in time ever again in this lifetime. All right. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to Home Biz Tax Talk. Again, we air Monday through Friday and you can come right here to get your questions answered about your home business taxes. All right. Have a great day and I will see you all next time. Bye.